Every now and then, films can spark off a series of video games. Often it's the other way around, where great video games lose some skin cells and those cells mutate into unholy mishes of live action failure. Often, the better the game, the more grotesque the cartoon or film is. However, one film in 1986 called Top Gun was popular enough to gain a small number of games over the next two decades. What was probably a vaguely accurate video game adaptation of the film back in 1987 slowly turned into a more generic flight simulator. Now, I've never played a game like this before, nor was I really curious about it either. I essentially still have my simulation virginity. What? I've never played a simulation game before. Even the cover itself is fairly generic. The description isn't even selling itself well. Amazing, low detail and realism. Wow, who got Shelley to pitch this item? I'm in the market for a low quality, top cost appliance. I wonder if that level of competence went into this game as well. Well, there's only one way to find out. Ah! No. No! Sometimes we must purge things from this world because they should not exist. Even if that means not getting a refund. I guess I don't have a choice, do I? Hmm. Configure. Hmm. One moment. Oh, there's only one option. Well, launch Top Gun, I guess. Oops, sorry, let me just take out Terminator 2. Alright, so you start a new game, pick a new slot, enter your character's name and pick main game and you're ready to... Alright, pick your area as well. And apparently you're here. And then your mission! How many options do there need to be? So after you go through the millionth option, you are finally briefed with the mission with some fairly impressive and clear voice acting. Annoyingly though, you have to wait a little bit before you can actually start playing the game. After that, you are met with some decent music and a quick rundown at what points you need to get to gain a certain rank. Because god damn, those points are so important! Um, game, you're going to have to tell me how to work this thing. Game, I'm serious, I don't know how to work this. With the appropriate knowledge of how to fly this thing, I can finally play this game. The first five missions are training missions. In this case, I can play any of the four available stages in any order, with the last one being unlocked when all four have been completed. The first mission is an extremely simple Hit X Balloons, which is dull and boring. Why so many balloons? When you complete the mission, you are given a generic message that is frustratingly off-center. Just how hard was it to keep it all in the middle? Hey look an accuracy bonus! <laughs> they actually thought I would care enough to want to be accurate. Why am I doing this again? The next mission involves rockets to blow stuff up. If the first mission was easy peasy, then this mission was unnecessarily difficult. Here's what a general playthrough of this level was like for me. This took me like forever to complete. Not only that, but when you need to turn around to attack the target again, you can't just do a U-turn like in Star Fox, oh no. You have to go high up into the sky, travel a million miles away from the target, and then turn around for the next five years before you're in any position to open fire again. 
Otherwise, you'll just turn right past the target or you're too close to the ground when aiming. Anyway, with that monstrous level, you would expect Mission 3 to be much worse. But it isn't! You get homing rockets this time around, and your targets are in the sky, so you don't have to be concerned about crashing into the ground so often. My god, this level is stupidly easy! Way to make a consistent difficulty game! Mission 4 is, you guessed it, even worse than Mission 2. You have to destroy 45 targets, each of which takes some time to take down. Don't you think they're overdoing it for the training stages? You have the same issues here that were in Mission 2, but this one is longer and therefore more liable for mistakes to be made, and one mistake and BAM, you're done, you have to start the whole thing again. I don't know, maybe I'm missing something in the brief. Making smart target selections can prove vital when it comes to maximizing the potential of your weapons, and a single bomb in the heart of the central building will destroy the facility and the tanks. Oh, that's what I've been doing wrong. They want us to do some aiming mechanism stuff. Yeah, I can do that. Quick shot into the middle. Go! and a single bomb in the heart of the central building will destroy the facility and the tanks. Single bomb in the heart of the central building will destroy... I am hitting this thing, dead center, with a rocket, and nothing is happening. I could exploit this for points, but otherwise, this thing is practically indestructible. If you were meant to do some Death Star weak spot mechanism, then you've seriously botched it up. You have to destroy the surrounding four targets before this one will go kaput. This means you have to do more tedious high flying, slow turning around, and then fly to the moon so you can have enough space between you and the target in both distance and altitude before you can do any serious damage. In fact, if I just don't give a hoot, then I can actually complete the level with no difficulty whatsoever. Way to encourage strategy, game! And Mission 5? It's actually even easier than Mission 3. You fight even less targets in this one, and can complete it in quite literally seconds. Well, training complete, I guess. With this, you can move on to the agent zone. When the game isn't babying you through tedious tests, it actually starts to feel more like a game. I have to admit, the rush of following objectives against enemy aircraft is actually quite exciting. But the feeling doesn't last long. After a while, I'm more concerned about point bonuses and keeping accuracy to a maximum. And the issues from the training missions are still there, but they aren't as large. Like here, when I need to destroy the enemy camp. At least it's all clustered together for an easy takedown with rockets and trigger happy bullets. The missions are pretty much all the same here on out. It just depends on how many enemy aircrafts you have to shoot down or. how many enemy aircrafts you have to shoot down. So with this, I just have to see how accurate it is compared to real life. I mean, that's what a flying simulator is to simulate real life. So I guess it has to go along the lines of low detail and realism unlike any other game. Which I guess is actually very true. No game can actually compare to how unrealistic this flight simulator is. I don't know how the army or air force work in this game, but I'm pretty sure this would not happen in real life. Number 1. Allied aircrafts can shoot, but have bullets with the strength of a sponge and don't deal any damage. At all. Number 2. If you leave the red box in the game, you automatically fail the mission. They don't just loop you back in Star Fox with a U-turn, oh no. They just flat out say you're a failure for a tactical retreat. Number 3. You can look into your own allied aircrafts. Destroying one will result in the failure of the mission, but what the heck, let's allow you to send a homing missile to one anyway. Number 4. When you complete the mission, you can crash your plane. Who cares if our only competent pilot committed suicide, all that matters is that we won the battle. Number 5. 
Crashing into your own allied aircraft means little damage to your own ride, but once you grease the underbelly of your plane on water or tip a fraction of your wing against a wall, you explode like napalm in a volcano. Now that, that is how you make a realistic game. The controls are also pretty horrendous. They are so tightly packed together on the keyboard. I can easily press the wrong button at the wrong time. It's not comfortable, and it feels really isolated. There are, however, some good points to this game. They seem to have done a nice job of making the replays look more impressive than the actual level played. It actually looks exciting and thrilling and on the edge of death itself. It is just a shame I cannot emulate that into the actual game. No, 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 Shelly! Mediocre replay, thrilling gameplay! And the music isn't too bad. It's a little generic, but it does the job well. At least I don't have to saw my ears off when I played this game. It's like they tried. Like they really, really tried, and it shows. But it still doesn't justify playing this game for all of eternity on this PC. The curse of Titus makes it impossible for me to switch discs. I can't play a decent game. If only if hey, I could. Have you tried taking the disc out? <laughs> well, obviously it will not be that easy. I mean, companies like this have a reputation because they're so bad. I can just take out the disc. Put the disc inside the case and presto presto. The disc is still inside the case. Are you quite sure you didn't just put the disc inside the computer, installed it, and as you were waiting, talked about the packaging and just forgot about it? It does sound like the sort of thing I would do. And now for the conclusion. Overall, I give this game a 4.7 out of 10. For the most part, this game isn't too bad. Those that like these sorts of games won't be disappointed much by it. They can still get an assimilation fix with this game. But to a gamer that admires a more creative genre, this game is easily repetitive, predictable, and boring after a while. If you didn't get spilt bombed every time a feather touched your windscreen, then this might have actually been slightly better.